Hello, this is Ed Hamler with a follow-up LPAC update. Upon further review of the incident involving Representative Giffords from Arizona on Saturday, it's become very clear now that some of the dust has settled, that someone is trying to use the situation to create a climate of dictatorship for anyone who's opposed to the Obama Nazi health policy and other policies of this type. The way the press has been spinning the situation, blaming those who are critics of the Obama T4 health policy, is as clear an indication as it gets as to the intent of the press to create a climate of terror. Just a few hours ago, Linda LaRouche denounced what he called a widespread fraud perpetrated by much of the media, attempting to blame former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin, among others, for creating the climate of hate that led to Saturday's shooting in Tucson. Within hours of the Saturday morning shooting spree by 22-year-old Jared Loeffner at a campaign event uh, by Representative Giffords, a media campaign, a propaganda barrage led by the London Guardian, the New York Times, MSNBC's Keith Ubermensch, and others, targeted Palin and other critics of Obama's T4 Nazi-modeled health care bill as politically and morally responsible for the shootings. Here's the truth of the matter, as conveyed by Lyndon LaRouche. The mere idea that critics of Obama's Nazi modeled euthanasia policy should be held accountable for this crime is in itself criminal. The basic facts known to anyone who cares to look are that President Obama imposed the so-called health care reform manufactured in Britain by Sir Donald Brovick and then Prime Minister Tony Blair that was modeled precisely on Adolf Hitler's 1939 T4 program for euthanasia and genocide against targeted segments of the German population who were deemed lives no longer worth living by the Nazis. The doctors and other Nazi officials who were the authors and executors of the T4 program beginning in September, October 1939 were later tried, convicted, and hung at Nuremberg for crimes against humanity. Mr. LaRouche then went on to discuss the fact that while we don't know the circumstances of Representative Giffords voting in favor of the T4 Obamacare bill, we do know that congressional Democrats came under massive pressure from the White House and from the President Obama personally to pass this euthanasia bill, and that the President was fully witting in his revival of Nazi policies, transmitted through Britain where Tony Blair's National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence first revived the T4 program through the National Health Service. LaRouche said, How can anyone be criticized for opposing outright crimes against humanity modeled on Hitler's own T4 program? This is the media fraud to which I am referring. The New York Times, the Fabian Society's London Guardian, and others propose that it is a crime to attack those perpetrating a revival of the very Nuremberg crimes that led the Nazi doctors to the gallows after World War II. This is the mentality inside the United States government today, including inside the U.S. Congress. They show a zeal to commit the crimes of Hitler because it is so important to save money for the continued bailout of London and Wall Street that people must die needlessly. There are some elements of the corrupt United States and British media trying to make it appear that those who condemn Hitler's genocide are somehow guilty of annoying them. Donald Berwick, President Obama's current chief health care policy advisor, as chairman of the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, was an architect of the Blair revival of Hitlerian euthanasia in Britain, and he is now working with President Obama to impose the identical policies here in the United States, targeting the elderly, the chronically ill, and other of the most vulnerable among us. Now, take a look at the shooter in the crime on Saturday. By the time 22-year-old Jared Loeffner purchased his handgun last November, he was already in a highly suggestible state and had been for some time a fuse waiting to be lit. Loeffner's mental deterioration from the time of his senior year in high school into that of his community college days coincided with his deepening involvement in what's called lucid dreaming or conscious dreaming. This cult teaches self-immersion in, in dream fantasy, supposedly self-controlled, as the path to total fulfillment through the information supposedly communicated through the dreams. The more he immersed himself into a life of self-induced and supposedly self-controlled fantasy, the more he became openly psychotic 
as seen by his friends, and more pathologically suggestible at the same time. According to reports, he was rejected from the military, and we know that Lochner's behavior bothered his classmates and professors at Pima Community College so much that the school asked him to leave, ordering him to undergo a psychological evaluation. His strange conduct, conduct also led to several run-ins with Pima campus police and prompted one student to vent in an email to a friend that Lofner scared the living crap out of her. We have a mentally unstable person in the class that scares the living crap out of me. He is one of those whose picture you see on the news after he comes into class with an automatic weapon. Everyone interviewed would say, yeah, he was in my math class and he was really weird. I sit by the door with my purse handy. If you see it on the news one night, know that I got out fast. The testimony of Lofner's friend, Bryce Tierney, along with other evidence, make clear Lofner's long obsession with Representative Giffords. He kept the letter she sent him in a safe from 2007, before Obama was in office, until 2011. He several times recounted a public exchange he had once uh, with her, and periodically commented on her actions to his friends, as on his YouTube page suggests. It should be asked whether Lofner had a history of crushes on older women. The known facts certainly suggest it. All these and other facts in the public record indicate that Jared Lofner had been pre-primed for an attack against Representative Giffords. All that was lacking was the suggestion. Last fall, at the latest, when Pima Community College expelled him on psychiatric grounds and required him to take the psychiatric evaluation, he entered the system in the sense that his background was then available through government psychiatric agencies to the unknown controller who later planted the suggestion to assassinate Representative Giffords. Now, within hours of the shooting, the first coverage of major media, led by the Morgan-owned New York Times and the London Guardian, blamed Sarah Palin for the killing because of her opposition to the Hitler-like Obama health care reform. This had been coordinated in advance, like the others who have been implicated as lone assassins in recent political killings. Lofner was a patsy in a much larger crime. This one aims for police state measures against the opponents of Obama's Hitlerian euthanasia. Mr. LaRouche concluded, I am struck by the speed with which the usual corrupt media outlets here and in Britain launched a coordinated campaign against Palin and other critics of President Obama's Nazi modeled policies. It is as if they were waiting for precisely such a heinous incident to occur to attack those criticizing the attempted revival of Hitlerian euthanasia. I wish I could say that I am shocked at this disgusting behavior, but I am not. The J.P. Morgan-backed New York Times and the Fabian Society-linked Guardian have a long track record of support for such outright genocidal policies. The Guardian was the chief booster of Tony Blair, when he was prime minister and pushed through his nice program of premeditated targeted denial of life-saving medical care for purely austerity reasons. These were Nuremberg crimes between 1939 and 1945, and they are still Nuremberg crimes today. The events that happened this past Saturday were no product of a climate of hate created by the Tea Party or something like that. This was a known mental case that was used as a patsy to create a climate of dictatorship by the British. The same British network who just revived Hitler's euthanasia policy in America through their tool Obama. So, don't be stupid. This is still the issue. People who compromise in fear of being associated with a Tea Party or something else will be like those Germans who compromise with Hitler in fear with not being viewed as good Germans. So that's all for now. We'll have more for you later on. This is Ed Hamler, signing off.